Hey everybody, how's it going? I want to put this up before this video real quick. Uh, for those of you who, uh, I know some of you are YouTube creators yourself, have your own channels, uh, so you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but uh, when you have a YouTube channel, you can go to what's called Channel Analytics, and it gives you so many pieces of data. Hey everybody, Motorport 59 here. Uh, when it... Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, I just want to put this piece up real quick before this video. Um, I know that some of you have YouTube channels of your own, and uh, so you'll know what I'm talking about as far as the channel analytics go. And uh, the analytics give you all sorts of data that you can use to uh grow your channel, uh, see where you can see where people are watching, when they're watching, what their age groups are, uh, a lot of stuff. But one of the, uh, one of the uh, pieces of data that you can get is how many, but one of the pieces of data that you can get is the percentage of viewers who are actually subscribers. And I was surprised to find out that uh, even for some of these channels with people who have many thousands or more subscriptions and I do that uh, their uh, uh, percentage of subscribers is averages around 20 mine's 50.2 I'm <clears throat> mine's over 52 percent and that's awesome and I want to thank all of you uh, who are subscribed for uh, having subscribed and continuing to watch the videos and if you watch the videos and you're not subscribed you you really should. Uh, not only does it help grow my channel, and I'm never going to make a million dollars off this channel. Uh, in the, I, I monetized my channel in April, and I've made a couple hundred bucks off of it. It's about it. But it's enough to justify uh, my business so I can write off my gas and my mileage and things like that. But it does help grow the channel. Uh, and if you're subscribed, you can click on the bell and it will notify you every time I put up content. I used to put up uh, two videos a week. I did that for a while, but it kind of got hard to keep up with for me. And according to some of my viewers, it kind of got hard for them to keep up with. So I started doing it once a week. My content goes up on Wednesdays unless I have something uh, extra that I want to toss in and I'll do it on a Tuesday and a Thursday. But anyway, uh, always remember... When you watch one of my videos, like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Everybody loves trains. So uh, anyhow, I just wanted to pop that out there and wish everybody a great day and a great autumn. It's cooling off here in Bakersfield, and I hope it's cooling off where you live. And uh, if you like that cold weather, I hope it's getting cold where you live. So anyhow, uh, everybody uh, take it easy, and uh, we'll see you in the video. Hey everybody, I was out shooting videos and uh, saw this uh, jump frog sign over my shoulder here and thought I'd do a little piece on frogs, on the different types we use. Uh, there may be more frogs, I am not a rail guy, I'm not a track guy, but I know that uh, there are three around here, these jump frogs. They weren't using those when I was working in the valley. If they were, I never noticed one, but these signs stand out uh, pretty visibly, and uh, I don't recall seeing one, but I don't know how they work. So let's go over the uh, different types of frogs we have around here and see what's up. All right, this is a jump frog. And the reason they're called that, as you can see, if you're going to come out of the siding, we'll go into it, whatever, out of the turnout, I should say. The flange of the wheel rides up on this solid piece and actually jumps over the rail, or jumps over the frog, and uh, falls back in right here. So you're actually jumping the frog with that wheel. And use this flange guard here. Keep the, uh, keep the wheels from moving around too awful much. But anyway, that is a jump frog. It doesn't move and it doesn't have the typical point of a frog that uh, old style frogs and spring frogs have. And this is where the uh, turnout to the siding comes out onto the main line. 
And as you can see, this frog is built considerably different than the jump frog. Uh, this is a spring frog, and as the uh, flange of the wheel coming out of the siding oops, contacts that rail there, that part of the frog, it pushes it over uh, against those buffers. The frog opens up, pushes the uh, point this way, and I think these may be called movable point frogs, something. One of you track guys knows... Let me know exactly what these are called. But anyway, that uh, guides it over onto the main. And you have the same type of guardrail here. Guardrail. You have the same type of guard here to keep, uh, to keep uh, gauge. But anyway, and if you're going down the main line, if you're not going into or out of the turnout, the flange of the wheel just follows that groove straight down the main line. Okay, this is the original type frog, as you can see. And as I said in the uh, piece I did on uh, the difference in rails, I'll link that in here. Um, the uh, frog was, they call it that because it looks like the underneath of a horse's hoof which looks just like that point right there, and that's called a frog. But this one, you can see it has flange guides that go uh, crisscross and go both ways uh, across that, uh, or in front of that point. And uh, there's no jump here, and there's no spring. These are how the original frogs were built. I imagine they still make them this way. But uh, anyway, that is the other kind of frog. Well, that'll conclude my little piece on frogs. What knowledge I have. If I've made some mistakes or uh, anything in that, you track guys are watching this and know, drop the comments below. Uh, as usual, if you have ideas, you want things you want to see me do, let me know in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motorport 59 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. See y'all later.